You want your cannabis and you want it now. But let's be honest, the couch is comfortable and you're not leaving the house. Not to worry. Amuse has your back. They deliver high quality cannabis products right to your front door. Think of them as a good friend with a great stash who's always available. From vape pens to flour, pre rolls to beverages, topicals to edibles, they've got it. All without the dispensary hassle. Check them out at amuse.com and save 20 bucks on us. That's right. Just use promo code PODCAST to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. That's A M U S E dot com. Promo code PODCAST. You want your cannabis and you want it now. But let's be honest the couch is comfortable and you're not leaving the house. Not to worry. Amuse has your back. They deliver high quality cannabis products right to your front door. Think of them as a good friend with a great stash who's always available. From vape pens to flour, pre rolls to beverages, topicals to edibles, they've got it. All without the dispensary hassle. Check them out at amuse.com and save 20 bucks on us. That's right. Just use promo code PODCAST to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. That's A M U S E.com. Promo code PODCAST. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. First and foremost, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy 4th of July. This is by far my favorite holiday. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the same as it usually is. We have the pandemic, we have the riots, we have the protests, so there's definitely a cloud hanging over the day. But me, personally... I'm not going to let that get in the way of me celebrating the independence of the nation that I love. While historically I have distrusted and even hated my government at times, what this nation is and what this nation stands for, I love. And on a day like today, I most certainly will be celebrating the fact that as an American, I do not have to call Prince Andrew, a prince. All right, so today's article, we're going to bump back down to Santa Fe, New Mexico. There's an article from The Sun, and I know The Sun's been taking some flack for their Paris stuff, the reports about Paris. While I give The Sun some of that blame, no doubt about it, you got to think about their sources as well, right? there's certain people out there who love to throw out this information. And there is a lot, there are certain people who were really locked into this Paris thing and they were quite convincing about the fact that she was in Paris. I never bought any of that nonsense. Usually the way I go about things is if I can't prove it myself, if I can't vet it myself and come to the same conclusion that the, the articles are coming to, I try to not take that article as serious as one that you can trace the source, right? So again, it's all about the source for me. The articles are all fine and well, but what is the source of the information that the article is giving you? And that is, from where I'm sitting, that is probably the most important part when you're doing research or you're covering things like this. Because a lot of disinformation is floating around about the Jeffrey Epstein case. And there is even a ton more now that Ghislaine Maxwell has been arrested. So many people trying to politicize this. So many people on both sides of the aisle trying to play a gotcha game. What they don't realize is that all of their favorites were caught up in this shit. You remember when I did the episode where I read all of the donations Jeffrey Epstein or his entities made to politicians? Go back and listen to that episode, okay? And then you tell me that this is something that you're going to use as a political cudgel against your opponents. That is foolish. This isn't about scoring political points. This is about justice and making sure that these survivors are not abandoned once again, are not ignored once again, and are not forgotten. Because that's what has happened throughout the decades. And it is unacceptable. So, article, The Sun. Headline, Missing Links. Epstein, Zorro Ranch manager, vanished after his death 
and Ghislaine Maxwell arrest has left other staff paranoid, as well they should be. If you worked for Jeffrey Epstein, if you were in the inner circle, if you were a housekeeper at his house, you should be expecting a call from the federal government. This case is huge, folks. I am talking huge. And if Epstein had not been arrested the first time around in 2007, 2008, then I would not even be going nowhere near as crazy about there not being arrests yet. Because it takes decades to build cases like this sometimes. RICO cases especially take quite some time. But they've had all of this information. They've had all of these documents. They've had all of this testimony. They know who all of this staff is. And they avoided prosecuting it before now. And that was my biggest problem. Now that they've made the move and they've arrested Ghislaine Maxwell, well, the idea is to stay on top of them, to make sure that they prosecute it in the correct way, and to make sure that the book is thrown at her. After all of this is said and done, and Ghislaine Maxwell has been convicted, and the survivors have had their chance to face her in court, I hope that they put her underneath Guantanamo Bay. That's what she deserves, in my opinion. She is a disgusting, despicable, gross excuse for a human being. Imagine having all that money in the world, all the wealth, all the power. You could do anything. You could be anyone. You can help anyone. And instead, you choose to get involved with Jeffrey Epstein and help run his sex trafficking ring? I have zero remorse for you. I don't care what happens to you. And in fact, I have never wanted somebody to be punished to the fullest extent of the law more than I want to see this disgusting excuse for a human being be punished. And as far as the staff goes, oh yeah, you better believe that they're, they're having a few uh, sleepless nights because a lot of these people knew what was going on and none of them came forward. And if that comes out in the trial that's to come, oh boy, it is going to be a bombshell. Not only should these people, the, the staff be worried, all of these pilots that were flying Jeffrey Epstein around, especially considering that only one third of the flight logs have ever been put forward or were ever even bothered to have the records kept. Boy, let me tell you what, a jury is going to have a field day with a case like this. An absolute field day. Usually if I get selected for a jury uh, duty when I'm being talked to by the judge or the prosecution or the defense, I let them know right away that I believe that the war on drugs is absolutely illegal I think that the war on drugs is ridiculous. I think it's a waste of time. And I think that all drugs should be legal, Your Honor. Inevitably, two seconds later, I am always dismissed from being a juror. In a case like this, though, I would act like I wanted to be there, right? If, if I ever got called for jury duty for a case like this, 100% I would act like I wanted to be there because... I would honestly want to throw the book at somebody like this as a juror. Imagine sitting on the panel and seeing Ghislaine Maxwell and hearing the case against her and not being incensed. I don't know how they're going to find people from a jury pool that wouldn't be freaking out about this, wanting to send people to prison. So all of these people that are, that are, that are part of the staff that worked with Jeffrey Epstein intimately, that were uh, at his properties, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all of these people better lawyer up because it's coming. All right, so this uh, article was authored by Katie Forrester. Jeffrey Epstein's ranch manager allegedly vanished after his death, while his other associates will be paranoid over news of Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest and ex-employee claims. And when I was down in Zorro Ranch, I stood out there for 45 minutes at that front gate, rang the bell, waved, nobody, not a soul came out to see me. And I was really bummed because I was hoping that even if it was just an employee or a worker, that maybe I could try and finesse them into, you know, divulging a little bit of information. But I was, I was unsuccessful in that regard. As soon as this pandemic lifts, I am getting back down to New Mexico. 
I've had I've been cultivating a, a, a few a few new sources. I've been introduced to a couple of new sources down there as well, and they have some interesting things to talk about. So as soon as I can get back down to New Mexico, I am definitely doing that, and hopefully I will be able to bring a couple of other people with me to help in a production role as far as, you know, um, video, et cetera, et cetera. I tried to do it all myself last time and it was a lot staying focused, making sure I was getting the right, uh, taking notes down, et cetera, et cetera. And you add the, uh, video videoing to it via videography, the videography and forget it. It was a nightmare. But next time I go down there, I'd really like to have a couple of people with me, a couple of uh, people to do video and help out with some of the other tasks because I'd like to stay down there for at least a week this time. The late pedophile who was accused of trafficking and raping women at his properties, including the sprawling Zorro Ranch estate in New Mexico, had a number of staff members who are not believed to have spoken to authorities. And this is what I was talking about New Mexico, right? It's a shit show down there. What is going on in New Mexico? Do the authorities not care? Nobody wants to talk to Jeffrey Epstein's employees. Nobody has raided the place. What in the F is going on at Zorro Ranch? We need to get some answers. This includes mysterious manager Bryce Gordon and his wife Karen, who lived in the quiet town of Stanley on the 10,000-acre ranch from the early 2000s, according to property records. Well, that's funny, huh? A fitting name for his wife, Karen. Sources have told The Sun the pair seemingly disappeared as the case exploded last year and Maxwell went into hiding, with locals speculating they packed up and moved to New Zealand. Well, that's quite the trip. From New Mexico to New Zealand? All my Kiwis out there, you got, you got some homework now. Bryce Gordon, anybody? Bryce and Karen Gordon in New Zealand, huh? Boy, I'd like to get an interview with them. If anybody has any access to Bryce or Karen Gordon in New Zealand, please send them my way. I would love to have a long chat with them about what occurred at Zorro Ranch. Because bad stuff. Really, really bad stuff went down at this place. And I have one of those gut feelings that the story we have been told is nowhere near as devious and disgusting as what the truth is. And it's kind of funny how these two would disappear right as Maxwell went into hiding. Were they still in contact with each other? Did Maxwell consider Bryce and Karen confidants, friends perhaps? She spent a lot of time at Zorro Ranch. Who hired them? Was it Ghislaine who hired them? Remember, she was in charge of property management according to the article we read yesterday. And again, this is why it's important that we catalog this and we read these articles. Because we pick up one thing in one article and then we use it in the next article to help us make sense of it. Ian Royal, who once lived on the land as a teen with his dad, Epstein's ranch hand, told the son, I can't believe Karen and Bryce have hardly been spoken about. They're ghosts. They're smart people. They wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been where they were with Epstein if they hadn't had some level of intelligence. I'm sure they'll definitely be, uh, I'm sure they'll, they're definitely realizing how bad things are and they're being tactical. That's for sure. He added, they oversaw the ranch. There's a lot of land out there and a lot of maintenance. So they were on the property quite a bit. They were in charge of the maintenance of the ranch. And you would think that they were probably in charge of bringing on some of the the hands, right? So Bryce and Karen Gordon most certainly, most certainly have a story to tell. Whenever he had visitors, he was making sure the ranch was taken care of, and Bryce and Karen were the two that would, that would talk to make sure that happened. So in this article from The Sun, they also have some pictures, um, some wall art of uh, Jesus on the cross appears above a bed in the mansion, blah, blah, blah. So you'll want to check out the link as well. Like I always tell you, make sure you check out, check out these links. And as much as we... Uh, talk trash about the sun for their their Paris nonsense, I think they've done a decent job covering this case. For a tabloid and for a newspaper that loves salacious headlines, I think the sun has done a pretty good job 
of covering this Jeffrey Epstein case. A better job than, say, the New York Times or the Washington Post, that's for sure. This is definitely a step towards justice, but there are still a lot of missing pieces of the puzzle that we're still finding as we build it. Yeah, it's for, again, every day we learn something new in this case, right? Every time you think you have an idea of what's going on, well, you find out that there's something else that you need to chase down, a new thread to chase down. And that's what this, that was the, the, the whole point of this organization, this criminal enterprise, to make it so vast, to make so many different chambers within it, that it would be impossible for people to navigate and find out who was doing what. And that is exactly what Epstein and Maxwell wanted, and they were able to operate in such a manner for so long Because A, they had help from the intelligence services, and B, well, I know a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this, but B, the maggots in the legacy media, the parasites in the legacy media also provided them, them coverage in exchange for access. Remember that the next time you renew your New York Times subscription or your Washington Post subscription, remember who has been lying to you, and remember who has told you the truth. The Sun has made numerous attempts to contact the couple who have no confirmed address in the U.S. or social media presence. Bryce is also listed as the manager of Epstein's Zorro Trust, and their old contact details are featured in this infamous little black book. Now that is a very intriguing bit of information. He is the manager of Epstein's Zorro Trust, huh? Well, that automatically, in my view, makes him a target in a money laundering investigation. So, where is Bryce and Karen? Angie Poss, a New Mexico state land office spokeswoman, told press last year employees had not responded to requests by her agency to inspect the ranch and there was no answer at the gates. I can confirm that there is no answer at those gates. Like I said, when I went, nobody showed up. I stood there for 45 minutes, pulled the car up, looking at the mirror, pressing the the button, the whole nine. I, I didn't see a soul, not a soul on the property. The state's attorney general canceled a lease agreement for 1,200 acres and Cypress Incorporated, a company associated with Epstein, attempted to sue before reaching a non-monetary settlement. Uh, you know, even in death, this man's decrepit gross hand reaches out to try and manipulate things. And that happens because of all of these maggots that he has left in his wake, all of these people that are hiding, like Bryce and his wife Karen, and the rest of these people that helped facilitate Epstein's crimes for years. And then they have the audacity to sue when the, the, the attorney general cancels the lease agreement. The audacity of these people, folks. Frank Fisher... Public affairs specialist for FBI's office in Albuquerque refused to comment on whether they had reached out to Bryce and Karen and told the Sun there are no announcements regarding any investigation or raid. Okay, Mr. Frank Fisher, public affairs specialist for the FBI's office in Albuquerque, I guess you'll be getting a few emails from me, perhaps a phone call as well. I don't want to hear that no no announcements. I want some comments. Why hasn't it been raided? There is no good reason why that property has still not been raided. And Mr. Frank Fisher at the FBI's public affairs office, remember, sir, who you work for. You don't work for Bill Barr. You don't work for Donald Trump. Okay? You work for the people of the United States of America, and we demand answers. Ian, whose dad refuses to speak about their time working for Epstein, claims he only briefly met the disgraced financier, pedophile, once and was not allowed to know his name, while the pair were unaware of what went on in the main house on the grounds situated on a hilltop. Well, I don't believe that he didn't know his name, but as far as not being aware of what went on up on the hilltop, for sure. These kind of people, they're not letting the the ranch hands in on their occult practices or whatever the hell it is they're doing in there. Their, their big ass spirit cooking party with John Podesta hanging out. They're not, they're not inviting people over for that. Right. So I could totally see the ranch hands not being part of that nonsense, but not knowing his name, his name, debatable at best. He described the home as being super lavish 
While it is believed to be the only property of Epstein's not to have been raided by the FBI, with at least one ranch hand still looking after cattle on the land. Again, I don't even understand how this is possible. When they do a raid on organized crime, say it's a a mob guy and he owns multiple properties. They're not just raiding one house. They're raiding everything at the same time so the guy can't get rid of evidence. But in the, the grand wisdom of the FBI and let's remember Jeffrey Berman's bitch ass, they didn't raid Zorro Ranch. So before you think Jeffrey Berman's a martyr and he needs to be defended, no, none of that shit. Jeffrey Berman was an impediment to this case. Jeffrey Berman was a stooge and Jeffrey Berman was a fool. I'm sure it hasn't, he said. I'm surprised. It would make sense to, with the charges against his ex-girlfriend, you would assume that that would be enough to warrant some kind of search of the ranch. Yeah, you would think so, right? And if the FBI's too busy, I'll gladly offer up my services. I'll go, I'll go look at the ranch for you. I'll raid it for you. Deputize me. I mean, New Mexico's obviously the wild, wild west anyway. I'll just show up. It'll be like uh, young guns. You can slap a badge on me and I'll go kick the door in. I mean, if the FBI doesn't want to do their job, maybe the local police should do their job. Does anybody want to do their job? Or have the Kings and former Governor Richardson finessed it. Zorro Ranch includes many bedrooms, an indoor pool, log cabin, stables, and even its own airstrip, along with an antique railroad car and train tracks. And when I was talking about my trip down to Zorro Ranch, we discussed how there would be just gaggles of girls with Epstein at the airports and how employees at the airports all knew the deal and they all talked about it every time Epstein would show up. And nobody did a damn thing. Epstein's madam, co-conspirator, fellow child molester, fellow abuser, Ghislaine Maxwell, who was busted at a $1 million hideaway on Thursday in Bradford, New Hampshire, is said to have been a regular visitor to the property on his private jet with former employee Deirdre Stratton describing naked photographs of her and young girls on the walls. Not only was Ghislaine a regular at the property, she had her helicopter license, helicopter pilot's license, and um, uh, aircraft license, so she would ferry people from the airport to and fro. She had a helicopter, and on the tail fin, the tail fin number, uh, letters were GM. How cute, right? Just like on old stank-ass Jeffrey Epstein's plane, it was J.E. They're just so cute, aren't they? These two disgustoids. She previously claimed Ghislaine Ghislaine thought she was quite the photographer and there would be photographs of, you know, like breasts and not necessarily who they were attached to. I remember this one photo of, I think there were two other girls in a a bathtub and they were naked. Again, Deirdre uh, Deirdre Stratton has provided several comments about this situation and she is somebody that the authorities, if they have not talked to yet, should. Because obviously there's nothing going on in New Mexico. Nobody's been brought in to have a talk with the FBI, nothing. So I guess uh, New Mexico is just an autonomous place outside of the United States with its own laws and it can do whatever the hell it wants, huh? Must be nice. She alleged Prince Andrew stayed at the home with a mystery woman in 2001 while survivors have spoken out about how they were raped and sexually assaulted on the premises. I, I, I hate to just keep beating a dead horse here, but with all of this information, how is this place not raided and shut down and seized? Instead, you're going to let this place just sit there like an eyesore? Who knows what's there? Who knows what's hidden on the property? Are there uh, subterranean safes or vaults? Are there hidey holes? We don't know anything. Andrew strongly denies any allegation of sexual misconduct made against him. Deidre admits she knew Epstein liked massages and once scared a young woman off, but was in the dark about the true extent of his sordid behavior. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Everyone's in cover your ass mode. All of these people that were very um, 
involved with Epstein intimately, even if there were just people working on his property, butlers, et cetera, et cetera, all of them had to know something goofy was going on. Jared Kellogg, a security analyst based in Albuquerque, also previously told of a conversation with Bryce Gordon while working at the property, who claimed the Clinton family had visited. I spent literally only 20 minutes with him, and Bryce asked me to consult with him on some cameras. He told InsideSources.com, on and off he would tell me the Clintons had stayed there. I had no idea who Jeffrey Epstein was when I first met Bryce, he added, saying he only discovered his connection to Zorro Ranch when his crimes made headlines. Well, I can confirm that the Clintons were there. My sources told me that to my face, Hillary and Bill. All right? So, again, you can think what you want and believe what you want and think this is a one-way uh, political tribal type of situation. It is not. All right? There are no good but good guys in this. Anyone around Epstein was scum, bro. And that's just the way it, 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 the, the cookie crumbles at this point. If you were hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, in my opinion, you're a scumbag. I, I don't want to hear, oh, I didn't know what he was doing, etc., etc. Screw that. This guy had no kids. He had no nieces or no nephews. There's no reason for young girls to be around him ever. Ever. And if you're somebody that would come around his house and see these young girls and see these paintings and see all this other disgusting shit and still associate with him, you, my friend, are the problem. Meanwhile, Ian says he is shocked by Ghislaine's location after she was arrested in New Hampshire, saying, I assume she'd be on an island or something, not in the U.S. The sad part is, if she's put in prison, she'll probably get good treatment because she's rich, right? Hopefully that's not the case, but we'll see. That is not going to be the case. She's going to federal prison. Federal prison is no joke. Even when you're on a minimum security yard, it's no joke. And for somebody like Elaine Maxwell, who's accused of child molestation, you are literally lower than a cockroach in jail, in prison. And if you don't think associates of people like La Eme, which is the Mexican mafia, regular gangs, the Aryan Brotherhood, are going to put out a green check, on Ghislaine Maxwell, then you don't know what jail is about. Because the second she hits the yard, she's going to be green-lighted. And what that means is, everybody, everybody has the okay to administer harm on her. And that's how it works in jail, folks. I'm, you know, for people that don't know, that's how it works. And if you're a chomo, a child molester, and you hit that yard, you are definitely, at some point, going to face vigilante justice. So while I don't think she's going to get lavish treatment, I do think they're going to put her in a uh, protective housing unit, a shoe. So we'll see how that all breaks down, but chomos are absolute worst, lowest rung creatures in prison. The Sun has contacted the FBI in New Mexico and Karen and Bryce Gordon for comment. Elaine Maxwell denies all allegations of sexual misconduct made against her. Of course she does. Of course she does. Even though the evidence is ample, even though there are eyewitnesses, people who she assaulted who are willing to testify against her, she still believes she might get out of this somehow, I bet. Her narcissism, her hubris, and her ego, all of the things that she has used to propel herself forward are now all going to be her downfall. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. Inside of the description box, you will find a link to the article, and you will also find a link to the GoFundMe if you would like to help out the podcast. All right, everybody, I hope you all have an amazing 4th of July. Please be safe, do not drink and drive, and most importantly, try and enjoy yourselves. You want your cannabis, and you want it now. But let's be honest, the couch is comfortable and you're not leaving the house. Not to worry. Amuse has your back. They deliver high-quality cannabis products right to your front door. 
Think of them as a good friend with a great stash who's always available. From vape pens to flour, pre-rolls to beverages, topicals to edibles, they've got it. All without the dispensary hassle. Check them out at amuse.com and save 20 bucks on us. That's right. Just use promo code PODCAST to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. That's A-M-U-S-E dot com. Promo code PODCAST. Katy Perry here. You know what's better than being a pop star? Motherhood. And nothing says motherhood like vinegar. Hear me out. Not just any old vinegar. Bragg apple cider vinegar made with the mother. Bragg ACV is packed with prebiotics to support a healthy gut and keep your immune system on point. From sustenance to self-care, this do-it-all elixir is a true Bragg staple. And they've been keeping it real for over a century because what's old is new. Bragg ACV truly is the mother of all vinegars.